Any minute now. With the start of this year's Kyoto Summit just three hours away, the delegates from the participating countries are beginning to arrive at the conference center. A major poll of domestic and international opinion carried out just last week shows that the vast majority of respondents favor a complete quarantine of Neo Kobe as a means to combat the risk of the snatcher menace. Now that the Chief's death has been confirmed, it won't be long before they strip us of our Junker authorization. They will be deciding how to handle Neo Kobe at the summit in just three hours. There are rumors that they're going to use nukes on the city to make sure the Snatchers are wiped out. That's ridiculous. Come on, this is the 21st century. That may not be as improbable as it seems. The world's leaders are extremely concerned about the Snatcher problem. The Chief was going to calm this hysteria in his speech at the summit, but that'll never happen now. Three months ago, government pressure on Junker operations increased dramatically. Gillian's transfer here was really our last chance. Our own Chief was snatched. It's not too surprising they don't want to trust us anymore. I've heard that the Army and FBI are going to take over operations now. That's correct. That too will be officially decided in three hours' time. Three hours, eh? Is there any way we can find their hideout in that time? If we don't, we and everybody else in this city are finished. As far as they're concerned, we're just like a cancerous tumor that has to be cut out. We have to hit the Snatcher's headquarters before then. Gillian, can you do it? If we only knew where it was, I should be able to manage something. Hitting their outposts like Queen's Hospital won't do any good. We have to find their main nerve center. What about the memory of that Snatcher who was impersonating the Chief? Just like the others, it was completely blanked. It's a form of self-destruct mechanism that they use. Wait a minute. Metal, what about tracing that video phone call from Jamie? It was no good. The call didn't last long enough. Still, it definitely did come from within the city. Damn. Where are they hiding? Gillian, can't you remember anything at all? Didn't Jamie say something that implied you were somehow connected to the Snatchers? Nothing. I can't remember a damn thing. Metal, I want you to tell me everything you know about me. Why was I sent to Junker headquarters? Where did I come from? Uh... Gillian... Metal, the Chief's dead. Tell me everything you know about me. Well... Metal! All right. With the Chief gone, you are the highest-ranking officer here. You knew all along? Of course. Where were we rescued from? Three years ago, you and Jamie were taken into protective custody in the Siberian Neutral Zone by the 17th Siberian Investigative Force. More precisely, you were discovered in cryogenic sleep pods in an underground bunker near Moscow. Cryogenic sleep pods? You mean they were frozen? This is a photograph of the bunker. There is no record of when you were placed there. In addition, the third pod was empty at the time you were discovered. There were three pods? You were revived and taken into custody by the army. Apparently, as a result of the extended sleep, both of you suffered from complete amnesia. However, another theory suggests your memories may have been intentionally erased. This is the only piece of evidence found at the site. That's Harry's picture, from when he was a kid. That's correct. Harry is Gillian and Jamie's son. It's been confirmed by DNA tests. Harry? Harry was my son? Using the information gained from the photo, it was established that you are Gillian Seed, and your wife, Jamie Lorraine. Both of you are American citizens, born in the late 1960s. The 1960s? In addition, both of you vanished without a trace in 1989. There is no other information available about you after that. 1989? Yes. You come from a world that's been gone for 50 years. But what does that have to do with the Snatchers? When the 17th Special Investigative Force was bringing the two of you out, there was an accident. Though the two of you were all right, most of the 17th was killed. 
one of them was a snatcher. Of course, before their departure, they all underwent thorough examinations. So, if one of them was snatched, it had to be somewhere in Siberia, right? That's correct. And in order to attempt to determine the origin of the Snatcher, as well as your true identities, you were assigned to Junker Headquarters. The hope was that exposure to the Snatchers would help you regain your memories. Moscow? Fifty years ago? Almost everyone who was in Moscow at the time was killed in the catastrophe. So Gillian and Jamie are the only living witnesses? Harry... Harry was my son. Did he know? No. It was highly classified information. He was never told. I... I was never able to do anything for him. Wait a minute, Gillian. Didn't Jamie say something about taking a boy hostage? That's right. They must know about Harry and are using him to threaten her. We have to find their headquarters quickly. We've only got three hours. Gillian, let's think this all through again. We may get some kind of a hint out of it. You're right. There may be some clue in the way they're operating. All right. Let's go over what we know about them. Yeah, so uh, Harry is Gillian and Jamie's son. But because he wasn't in cryostasis, that's why he looks so much older. I saw, yeah, what, what was it? You, you screamed at your neighbor for smoking before. You could smell cigarettes from your apartment. So you screamed out the window, stop smoking, you fucking cunt. <laughs> nice, Marcel. I'm sure that went down well, didn't it? Oh, you got no response. Okay. Also, yeah, if you tax the crap out of it, people smuggle it, smuggle it from somewhere else. Sure, but not everyone will. Not everyone's. Most people are lazy. They'll just get. They'll just go down the shop and grab some. <coughs> right. So, first of all, what's the snatcher's weak point? Um, ultraviolet. What? Ultraviolet ways. I was about to say there. Ultraviolet rays. This is the snatcher's weak point. That's correct. Their weak point is their defective artificial skin. Long-term exposure to ultraviolet rays causes mutations in the mel melanocytes in the straight stratum, bas stratum basal? I don't know. Of, the, of their skin, which become cancerous. Specifically, long ultraviolet rays in the 250 to 350 nanometer range is responsible for causing the cancer. That's right. And that's the reason that they are so limited as to when they can be out. They only come out at night in the middle of the winter and wear sunscreen even then. That's the method that Gene used to figure out what the Snatchers were up to. <coughs> How ironic. It turns out that the destruction of the ozone layer actually had a benefit for us humans. That's right. Now what method were they, a uh, were they using to move and be able to avoid ultraviolet rays and sunlight at the same time? Uh, the, um, was it the, not the underpass, it was the highway, wasn't it? I thought it was called something else, but, yeah, highway? No, because highway would uh, assume it's on the top, right? Underpass? That's right, they were using, that's it, the tube liner. They were using the abandoned tunnels of the old tube liner system to get from place to place. That's how they were able to move around without being noticed. Nielsen's apartment, the old factory, Queen's Hospital, all of their hideouts were connected by the tube liner. So maybe there is a tunnel under their main base as well. There's a good chance of that. Next, what phenomenon was always observed at any location where snatches appeared, including the underground tunnels? Snow 9. Oh, um, sneeze. That's right. And what was the cause of the sneezing? Snow Nine. You're correct. The sneezing was caused by the presence of the allergen Snow Nine. Ah, right, here we go. Just in case anyone didn't uh, hear what Snow Nine was, here's a better explanation of it. 
Snow Nine is an artificial form of pollen developed by the military and its presence is limited to certain regions. They were using it to interfere with radio transmissions and keep people away. They probably were producing it intentionally themselves. The only regions of the city where Snow Nine is still present are areas around the Inner River. It has been cleared out of other areas because of the danger it presents. So that means that their base must be somewhere near the Inner River, right? As a fair conclusion, they're probably somewhere near the Ina River, protected by the Snow Nine. Hmm. Accessible to the tube liner and near the Ina River. And we must not forget that the, th uh, the three photographs that we found the Snatchers with, all of them were related to the Soviet Union before the catastrophe. The map on the wall of Nielsen's apartment. The picture of the temple in the director's office at Queen's Hospital. The photo of Red Square hidden in the chief's office. Why do the Snatchers keep pictures and memorabilia like this? Maybe they're homesick? Maybe that's where they come from. Homesick? Get serious, Mika. They're robots, you know. Let's analyse this a little closer. What city is related to all three of these pictures? Moscow. That's correct. It's Moscow. Moscow must be where they come from. That must be the basis of their programming. You might be right. Just as people have, have a hometown that is dear to them, their creators may have put a hometown into their programming. They use very advanced artificial intelligence systems. So they may have needed something like that to maintain their emotional balance. Yeah, they were born out of nothing, but they needed to give them some kind of image as an emotional base. So Moscow is their creator and their home. And the place that they were, uh, were sorry, and the place that they found Jamie and I. In other words, this homing instinct thing of theirs has led them to set up their headquarters in some place that reminds them of home or their creator. What part of this city is like Moscow? Moscow's really cold, right? They get a lot of snow, don't they? Snow? No snow has been recorded in Neo Kobe in several years. Well, then that's not it. Wait, what about that pollen? That crystal bioengineered stuff, Snow 9? Now that you mention it, wasn't it snowing on Jamie's video phone call? That's right. Their hideout has to be somewhere close to the Ina River. The Ina River flows for miles around here, Gillian. We could never search it all in time. Gillian, let's look at a map of the areas investigated so far. This is an enlarged view of the southwest portion of the city around the Ina River. This blue area is that in which Snow 9 is present. Now I'll superimpose a chart of the abandoned tube liner tunnels. From this we can establish those areas with Snow 9, which are accessible by subway tunnel. Damn. Nice try, but it's still too large. We could never cover it in three hours. Don't give up so fast, Gillian. What about that image of home thing we were talking about? Maybe there's some kind of geographic similarity. Maybe the same view can be seen or something. I'll display a map of Moscow alongside. Hmm. What's this? Look, the rivers are exactly the same shape. This is the Moscow River over here. It looks like we're on the right track, Metal. Show us the location that Jamie and I were picked up from. All right, right here. Metal, before the catastrophe, what was at this location? The headquarters for the entire Soviet Union, the Kremlin. The Kremlin? That Snatcher said something about taking Jamie to their Kremlin. Metal, what spot in Neo Kobe would match up with the location of Moscow's Kremlin? Calculating. This is the spot. It's presently occupied by an old church. It's rather large, but reports indicate it's been abandoned for nearly 20 years. And it's right in the middle of the Snow Nine and Subway area. That's it! That's their headquarters! Their new Kremlin! Gillian, let's go! Wait, Gillian. I want to go with you. Sorry, Mika. Hey, I'm a Junker too, you know. I know, and you're a great one at that. So take me with you, then. You head to the summit to warn the delegates. They haven't given up, you know. The summit's in Kyoto. I'm not going to be the only one to run. 
You've got to convince them not to use nukes on Neo Kobe. We found their hideout. There's no need now to sink the whole island. Yes, but... It's a tough job. Can you do it? Okay, Gillian. I'll do what I can. Thanks. Thank you, Mika. Don't say it, okay? Let's go, Gillian. Gillian? Yes? Um... Uh... What's wrong? How about dinner sometime? Dinner? Yeah, you know, dinner. Hmm. Mika. Not interested. <laughs> I thought it would be nice, you know, to kick back, relax. It's Christmas after all. Christmas, huh? I'll be back by then. Gillian, we have to hurry. That's a promise, right? I heard you. Yeah, okay. But I gotta go to church first. I'll see you soon then. Okay, Metal, let's go. I think uh, I, I, I might be able to finish this tonight, potentially. I, I say that, but then I'll be here for like four hours, won't I? You incinerated your cutlet, Reese. <laughs> Does it still taste nice is the question, I guess. That, uh, that music we just had um, in that last cutscene reminded me of uh, Fantasy Star, actually. This is the last turbo cycle. This spare turbo cycle has been painted, but, the, uh, but that does not affect its locomotive functions. Parking lot has become rather lonely. It appears quite safe. It has not been tampered with. Good. Do not read any motion. You and I are the only ones here. You might have uh, got 270 degrees centigrade confused with 170 degrees centigrade. That is rather unfortunate, Reese. yes. That's also the kind of thing that I would do. One million percent, that is something I would do. Of course, I know the answer to that question. I've input the map data on the Kremlin's locations. Lift off. Flight configuration, now gaining altitude. Jamie, please be safe. Gillian, please keep in mind that we're working with a strict time limit. A 50 year debt in three hours. Snow! Snow 9, to be specific. We've entered the Snow 9 region. Please put on your breathing filter. Direct inhalation is dangerous. All right. Radio transmissions will also be impossible from this point on. Understood? Now descending. Conversion to hover configuration complete. Gillian, we've arrived. Getting some serious music now. Wow, it look, kind of looks like uh, one of the uh, things in Moscow, doesn't it? Wow, now I know where they call it the their Kremlin. Kremlin, sorry. It's a very old church. It bears quite a resemblance to St. Basil's Cathedral. No doubt they thought the same thing. It appears to be snow, but it's actually Snow 9. Try to avoid inhaling any of it directly. It's surrounded by a large grove of tall cedar trees. This is likely to, uh, to keep just about anybody away. Given the season, a few Christmas lights would really liven up the scene. The building is about 50 years old, but appears very well maintained. It's not snow, it's snow nine. <laughs> so where's the entrance? On the front side of the building. This is definitely Snow 9. A sensor scan reveals that a tube liner tunnel passes directly underneath this area. Well, that's no surprise. Looks like we've got the right place. Yeah, pr I was going to say place. Right place. 
Apparently I can't talk. Not picking up any large movement signals. The only sound is that of the wind. Let's go inside. All right, now opening the door. What's wrong? Won't open? I've scanned it, and it's not locked. It is probably rusted into place. Not surprising. After all, our friends always go in and out through the basement. Let's push it together. All right. One. Two. Three. That got it. What's this? It would appear to be some kind of a chapel for the Snatchers. Are you telling me those things pray? To whom? No doubt to their creator. That portrait on the wall is probably a representation of him. This person is no doubt the one the Snatchers worship as their creator. This guy. Isn't that random? It did kind of look like him, didn't it? Kind of looks like Raiden, actually. One, Actually, yeah, do you reckon Raiden's based on this character? One moment, I'll compare the picture with my data on random. Um, Sarah, this is, um, this is a game made by Hideo Kojima, so it's got a lot of references to Metal Gear in it. While the facial bone structure of the individual in the portrait is nearly identical to that of random, a positive identification is impossible as this as the picture is not a photograph. That just looks too much like him to be a coincidence. These are the chairs for worshippers in the chapel, no doubt. Everything is nice and orderly. It's as if the pre-collapsed Soviet Union is being recreated here. Something's written on the painting, the creator, Modnar. Ah! What, uh, what does Modnar spell backwards? Random. I think so, internet, yeah. It's, um, I think in large quantities, Snow Nine is meant to be poisonous to humans, apparently. So this is Professor Modnar. The one the Snatcher was talking about, eh? It appears to be a portrait of that person. There are a number of scratches on the surface. They were al almost certainly caused by the Snatchers. It's all very organised, almost inhumanly so. Hmm? There's another room further back. Any motion? Not showing anything out of the ordinary. So have they already left for the summit? The music's getting your headache back. Sorry, Sarah. This is kind of what... Um, this is what we had back in 1994. No worries, Sarah. It's fine. Don't worry. Yeah, it's, it's in large quantities, Tron. I think it's bad. But like in, in the small quantities that we've been breathing in, it's been fine. The whole area is exceptionally quiet. Uh, continue back. Now moving into the back room. S snatches. I'm gonna. I, this looks like we're gonna have a fight here, don't you think? Look at them all. I'm not picking up any energy rate readings. They are all uh, they are all deactivated in some kind of suspension mode. So this is their warehouse, eh? There must be a few hundred of them here. They continue all the way to back. Still, this doesn't look like a factory to me. These are endo structures which have yet to have the artificial skin installed. The bone sizing devices and skull stilt, uh, slits sorry, are all still set to the smallest sizes. So their victims haven't been chosen yet. They're all just waiting their turn. 
There seem to be a number of containers stacked up in the back of the room. None of these snatches appear damaged. All they need is their energy packs. The gender units have yet to be installed, however. I do not see any tools or equipment for maintaining anything in the area. This room would appear to be just a storage area. There's some kind of label here. 23rd Siberian Investigative Force. Siberian Investigative Force? It would appear that these snatches were brought to Neo Kobe from the Siberian Neutral Zone. Seems that the investigative uh, forces have been responsible for shipping the snatches. In other words, the investigative forces have been snatched, just like when they found us. I see. So the Siberian investigative forces bring the snatches out, uh, bring the snatches out of Siberia and into storage here. I think you're right, Metal. And then the snatches just wait here in storage to be reactivated and adjusted after their victims are selected. A rather efficient system. I wonder where the actual snatching takes place. The back part of this room may hold the answer to that question. What about the size of these containers? The volume of these containers would be just perfect for shipping one of these snatches. This is no doubt how they got here. I mean, I don't... I honestly, I remember bits of this story. Like, I remembered that um, Harry was... Uh, Gillian and Jamie's son in the last part but I, I don't remember about random like it doesn't seem like it does it yeah to buy the um, memory cards if you want to save more than one file of this game yeah I seem to remember that Tron because it was just used the built in memory didn't it it's perfectly quiet are you ready, Gillian? Now heading for the room further back. Oh, so it was the ram cart, wasn't it? This is where they get their skin. The Snatcher's culturing room. The mechanism is operating. Gillian, there's snatches with their artificial skin already installed here. Is there going to be one with Gillian's face on it? This is where they fuse the artificial skin onto the snatcher's endostructure. First, they adjust the size of the still skinless snatcher to the size of the individual who is to be snatched. The snatcher's overall shape and size can be adjusted by expansion or contraction of sizing rods. Their sex is controlled by gender units, which are installed at this point. Then, the face is modified to match the intended victim by adjusting the size of the upper and lower jaw, cheekbones, temporal bones, and tooth alignment. Just like Gibson said, that means there are limits to the size of the people that they can snatch. That's right. The limits of the mechanism mean that they can't snatch children, the elderly, or people who are very tall or heavy. And this is where the artificial muscles attach. Is it organic? No. It appears to be coated with a type of plastic gel capable of mechanical response. Like human muscles, it creates mechanical energy through chemical reactions. And this is where the artificial skin is attached. In order to prevent the synthetic cells, developed using biotechnological protein design techniques, from rejecting the inorganic material below, they attach it gradually over a number of days. And this is the stuff that gets cancer if they stay out in the sun too long. Finally, they attach body and scalp hair. The process involves transplant of synthetic hair follicles as well, so the hair will grow back if it's lost. What about scars or birthmarks? It would appear that they make those adjustments at this point in the process, as they would for wrinkles to simulate age. Hmm. Then the Shining Force took up almost all of the Sega CD internal memory. Really, Tron? I actually have a Shining Force CD, but I, I've never played it. Uh, I'm lucky enough that I've got one of the RAM carts. I got it. I think I got it quite cheap, actually. A computer terminal is installed on each preservation cylinder. Because I, I don't think we actually got them over here full stop. Like, at all. I, I, I've actually got one of the US ones. These cylinders are used to culture the snatcher's artificial skin. Endostructures are submerged within them. 
I, I've actually the only Shining Force I played is Shining Force Three, uh, which was very good, admittedly. It appears that weak ultraviolet rays are being projected from above. This is really advanced, way beyond anything we saw at the Queen's Hospital. The whole area is protected as a clean room. There is a door at the far end of the room. It's locked, but I should be able to open it from this side. The power's on. Look at this, Gillian. The data of people to be snatched is all being neatly processed. So this is where the whole thing begins. The endostructures arrive here from the Kremlin. Then they convert them into copies of their victims. And finally, they head out into the city using the old subway system. With artificial skin maintenance being handled at Queen's Hospital. But who is behind all this? Gillian, look at this. There are some finished snatchers over here. Get a load of this. The U.S. President, the Prime Ministers of Japan, and the U.K. Gillian, you're in here too. Huh, <laughs> figures. They were looking to snatch every VIP at the summit. And the last junker, you. It definitely looks like they plan on moving out beyond Neo Kobe. If they were to snatch every major world leader, they'd practically be able to control the planet. Still, that's odd. With their flawed skin, pulling something off like that would really be difficult. Chin said they had found the key to developing a perfect artificial skin. Maybe they've already produced it. No idea. But the number of snatchers here makes it clear that they're up to something new. Gillian, this is definitely their nest. We should destroy everything. Not yet. Not until we found Jamie. Uh, Metal, uh, how much time do we have left? The summit should have begun by now. We don't have much time. And once our legal privileges are suspended, I won't be able to help. In fact, I'll be forced to restrain you. I know, I know. If the military wants to avoid nukes and goes for a surgical strike on this facility, uh, what would they likely use? Probably a phased particle beam from one of the attack satellites. A phased particle beam, huh? That'll wipe this complex right off the map. Everything, including the soil, will simply evaporate. The attack will leave just a large crater. Metal, can you convince them to give me another hour? Even 30 minutes will help. Understood. I'll try my best. And I'll try to find and rescue Jamie in that time. I can't transmit here due to interference from the Snow Nine. I'll have to leave the area and then send the message. All right. Do it, Metal. Gillian, don't forget. 30 minutes. You must get out before then. I understand. Gillian, I'm sorry I couldn't help you better. Don't worry about it. I'll be able to move faster by myself anyway. 30 minutes should be plenty. Go, Metal! Yes, sir. Don't forget, 30 minutes! I, I actually don't remember the random... 30 thing. minutes? Oh, this is gonna be tight. That room's the only place left to check. Let's take a look. Yeah, I, c I can't remember how random... Uh, like, where he... Where he sort of places in all of this now. Right. Oh. Okay, these ones are a bit, uh, a bit sneakier. Fuck. Oh my god, wow. Damn. The problem is, if you um, if you like let a couple of them hit you, then you just kind of get like stun locked almost. Uh, by the way, Mo, the um, shining force on the um, uh, the GBA was that the one that was like a remake of one of the Mega Drive ones? No, Tron, I didn't play with the Justifier. No, but by the time I played this. Um, 
I think I had a, a, an LCD screen, and obviously they don't work on um, LCD screens. That and I just I just didn't have one. Plus, I think I feel like this bit. Do you reckon this bit would be actually it might be easier with a justifier, perhaps? Right, let's do better this time. Oh, I said better. It's not picking up my uh, button presses every time. Ah, oh, fuck it. I'll try again. There's like some kind of delay in between when you press it and like you can't fire multiple shots really quickly. Uh, but yeah, no, I think I've got that one, Mo. That, um, that's, that's Shining Force. See, it's a Camelot that made them. They're the guys that made Golden Sun, right? I did for the part that the driver was a snatcher. That that actually would be cool. Yeah. Felt awesome to reach over and grab the gun and shoot him. I think I remember that this part was probably the only part that got stuck on in the um, the first time I played this. Is randomized. dude <laughs> yeah it's not bad with the controller once you get used to it yeah it's uh it's, it's got a weird delay on it i don't know if it's just my controller um like sometimes you can shoot quite quickly and then other times it just doesn't doesn't want to doesn't want to be uh listening to your inputs that and it is it being randomized i think some patterns are like worse than others Right there, didn't want to shoot for some reason. I think it's if you miss, then you have a slight delay. Maybe that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. So I seem to have to fire quite quickly otherwise. Oh, fucking hell, dude. Fucking hell. I don't remember this being like this hard. Luckily, even though it's an old school game, it's pretty generous with its uh, save points. Definitely pressing the button, it's just sometimes not working. <sighs> you just get like, really easily overwhelmed in that scene. It's raw! <laughs> I feel like, yeah, Gordon Ramsay would be pretty funny in this scene, I think.
Ready for that? No. They almost got me. All right. Uh, let's open the next door. Wow. <laughs> oh, is it another one? Doesn't look like there's anything here. Whoa! <laughs> 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 Jeez, these guys are tough. Of course, I didn't exactly expect them to welcome me with open arms. Okay, uh, let's try this next door. Let's get another cheeky save in just in case. It's not quite as generous. Is that Jamie? Jamie, are you all right? Gillian, you came for me. Are you hurt? No, they won't lay a finger on me. Not until the new artificial skin is completed anyway. Artificial skin research? You? Gillian, I've got my memory back. All of it. What happened? Tell me, Jamie. They said they'd kill him. They said they'd kill Harry. They forced me. I had to help them with the skin development. They said I had to help them because the professor was ill. Wasn't getting any better. Gillian, the engineer Harry, he's our son. He's been living on his own now for 50 years. Jamie... I'm afraid that Harry's... There was nothing I could do. They forced me. But I can't do it anymore. Jamie! The professor... He just died. He was over a hundred. The professor? What? This old man? Don't you remember? It's Professor Modner. Professor Petrovich Modner. What? This old man is Modner? He's been confined here for three years now, just to develop the Snatcher's artificial skin. Terrible. Doing that to your own father. Whose father? Jamie, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. You really can't remember, can you? Jamie, tell me. Tell me who I am. Uh, what were we doing at the Kremlin? Are you sure you really want me to, Gillian? It's all so awful, but if you must know, I'll tell you. Try to remain calm, okay? Fifty-six years ago, you and I were involved in a top-secret Soviet project. It was still during the time of the Cold War. The gulf between East and West was as wide as ever. Everybody was worried about nukes. At that point, the world's armies were at their largest ever. Leaders still believed that a strong military meant a strong nation. There were rumors that there would be an agreement to end the production of nuclear weapons. On the other hand, the major powers like the U.S. began to get involved in a space weapons race. But not the Soviets. The conservative despots in the Kremlin had another, completely different idea for gaining military superiority. A horrible plan. Something no one else would think of. At that time, the countries of the communist bloc were facing an economic crisis. Popular movements pushing for democracy were springing up all over. Communism itself was facing extinction. Facing pressure from the reformers, the Kremlin began to panic. And that's when that horrible, childish plan was launched. And that was the Snatcher Project. Replace your enemy's leaders with puppets of your own. 
Then you control their governments, their economies, take over a country from the inside out. That's right, Gillian. And to develop these robots, they assembled some of the most brilliant scientific minds from around the world. Some of them were even brought in against their will. At the crux of that development effort was a group called the Frankenstein Project Team. You and I were members of that team, Gillian. It was a four-person team led by the late Professor Modner here. The robotics expert was Professor Modner himself. His son, Elijah Modner, handled genetics and microbiology. For nanobiology and picobiology, myself. And for behavioral science and psychology, you, Gillian. Early development was carried out at a lab in Novosibirsk, but was later moved to a secret facility under the Kremlin. At the time, the Glasnost and Perestroika movements were gaining momentum, and they rightly feared for the existence of the program if it should become known. But some of the reformers did learn of the project, and they conspired with the U.S. to block it. Gillian, you were a CIA special agent sent by the United States to infiltrate and sabotage the project. I was CIA? Yes, and the government knows that. That's why you were assigned to the Junker team. What? Who am I? Work on the project continued to go smoothly. But then, on June 6, 1996, there was that accident. A mysterious explosion at the Chernobyl facility spread a bacterial weapon that was under development there into the atmosphere, destroying the country and the project. Killian, was it you? Did you set off that explosion? What? You can't be serious. You think I caused the catastrophe? Somehow, during the confusion, Professor Modner and our son Harry managed to get picked up by American agents. But we couldn't get out in time, you and I and Elijah. In a shelter below the Kremlin, we entered a cryogenic sleep. Our plan was to sleep there until the toxic effects of the bacteria were safely passed. And then 48 years later, three years ago, we were discovered by the 17th Special Investigative Force. Yes, but when they found us, Elijah's pod was already empty. Elijah Modner? That guy whose picture was in the church? The one that looks like random? That's right, Elijah is alive! Elijah is here and working on the Snatchers. Why don't you let me finish your little story? Who's there? It's been a while, hasn't it, Jamie? Ah, yes. And Gillian. It's me, Jamie. Elijah? Is that really you? Random? No. Not quite. So, you remember me, do you? I am Elijah Modnar, the only son of Professor Petrovich Modnar. I'm afraid I've grown somewhat old and feeble since we last met, however. Elijah, why are you doing this? Your father, Professor Modner, he just... He passed away a few minutes ago. What? My father? My father is dead? Elijah, what... What happened to you? The Elijah I knew could never do anything like this. I've changed, Jamie. These 40 years have changed me. I can't believe it. What happened to you? What happened to me? Jamie, do I actually have to explain it to you? Jamie, it's you. Your beauty is the cause of all that has come to pass here. Fifty-seven years ago, I was obsessed. With my research, yes. And with you, Jamie. At the time, I was still young, having just graduated with my genetic engineering degree. My father's connections got me on the team, and there, I met you. You were working as my father's assistant. Your beauty, your smile, I was stricken. I saw something in you that I never felt with women of my own country. You warmed my cold, young heart, Jamie. You opened me up, and I couldn't stop my feelings. Elijah! 
Oh, I was so happy. The political situation was crumbling around us, but every day was a joy. I gained my father's trust, and with you there watching over me, I was able to work as hard as I ever have on the project. However, my happiness did not last for long. Gillian, it was you. You showed up and all was ruined. You arrived and joined our project team. Far from home, Jamie found comfort in a man from the same land. Your relationship grew quickly, and all I could do was stand by and watch. Jamie and Gillian fell in love, were joined, and even had a child. Harry. Even then, my feelings for you only grew stronger. Worried about me, my father tried to have me removed from the project, but I persisted. Jamie, I always wanted to be near you. I can't wait for and Cyberpunk, then, dude. The democratic movements that had consumed the rest of the Eastern Bloc spread to our country as well. The Cold War was over. The hardliners who had pushed for its development were stripped of power and the project was cancelled. The reformers, trying to cover up the existence of such a crazed project, ordered that all materials related to it be destroyed, and that we stand trial for our actions. Jamie and Gillian were to be returned to their homeland. That's about the time that I learned that you, Gillian, that you were a CIA agent, and that you were trying to pass documents on our research to your military. The country had sold us out. I'm no politician. I couldn't care less about what happened to the country. All I cared about was my research and Jamie. And I was to lose all of that, everything. For someone so young, you cannot understand how great of a shock that was. Elijah. That is when I decided I swore I would see that secret crazed project through to the end. At the time, the Bioroids were 80% finished. The main part, their endostructure, was essentially completed. But we still were having trouble with the artificial skin. The area that Jamie and I were assigned to. We called it artificial skin, but there was of course no need to duplicate T-lymphocytes, Langerhan cells, or endocrine cells. All we needed was keratinized cells and melanocytes to provide the pigment. With the artificial protein development techniques that we had in those days, full-scale synthetic cell development was very difficult. Research like this took months, years. The original project called for us to simultaneously snatch an entire country. In other words, a whole nation or an entire city had to be snatched over the course of one night. For that reason, a powerful biological agent, which could quickly and effectively kill the population of the country, was being simultaneously developed. Lucifer Alpha. That's right. A type RAO-11 virus which another team was developing. For someone like myself, who was closely involved in the project, blowing up the lab was quite a simple task. My God, Elijah, do you know what you're saying? That explosion killed half the world's population. I moved all the materials and records essential to the Bioroid project into the shelter and executed my plan on June 6th. After sealing off the lab, I brought the two of you with me to the underground shelter and we entered a cryogenic sleep. But not before I programmed an atmospheric research satellite to transmit a wake signal when the danger from Lucifer Alpha had passed. And ten years later, Lucifer Alpha naturally mutated into a non-toxic form. But the automatic revival system failed to work. Oh no, no no, it worked. Just as planned, it revived me ten years later. A little sooner than the two of you, of course. But even though you sealed the lab with the explosion and everything, you should have been exposed. Why weren't you? Oh, I was. But by that time, the vaccine L Angels had already been developed. So everything went just as you planned it then? 
Yes, up until that point. But my real struggle was yet to come. My original plan was to revive Jamie as well, and for the two of us to finish the development of the Bioroids. You, Gillian, you were to stay asleep forever. But I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Not after looking at Jamie's peaceful face there in the pod. Besides, I could never have convinced her to work with me on the project anyway. I knew the time was not yet right, so I changed the timers of your pods to permanent on. How? How could you do such a thing? And so for the next 40 years, I worked alone in that cold and lonely room under the Kremlin, trying to complete the artificial skin for the Snatchers. For days and days, no one would visit me. I never saw the sun or felt the changing of the seasons. Still, I always had Jamie by my side. You were always there for me to talk to. Just you and I for 40 years in that dark cellar. Oh, you poor, poor man. Really? And then, three years ago, my research was finally completed. First, I snatched the Siberian Special Investigative Forces to establish a transport route for the Snatchers. And then, to test the effect of large-scale Snatch operations, I chose Neokobe City to be my experimental sample. Neokobe is cut off from the surrounding areas, a sort of miniature country in itself, making it a perfect test site. And since it's a melting pot of various races, it would also allow me to gather extensive data on snatcher modification and operational techniques. In addition, the element of suspicion or mistrust, which runs deep in Japanese culture, was another reason I chose this site. But your test revealed a critical flaw in your machine's artificial skin. Yes, quite unexpected, I'm afraid. All my research for 40 years. I gathered data and worked day and night to find a solution, but nothing seemed to work. So that's why you decided to bring Professor Modner here, right? That's correct. I discovered my father in one of the government's hospitals. He was old, but still very sound of mind. Naturally, he would not cooperate with me. Of course not. He'd never become involved in something like that. So, unable to receive his assistance, I decided that I had to have yours. But a mistake on my part allowed both you and Gillian to be taken into custody by the authorities first. Just what are you trying to accomplish, Elijah? You must know you can never get Jamie back. I'm only interested in discovering what I can of the human animal. In the past, it was because of Jamie. My motive is different now. It sounds like you're just suffering from the wild arrogance that corrupts so many scientists. Humans are such weak creatures. No matter how much they trust one another, the tiniest speck of suspicion can destroy it all. Look at how the Snatcher problem has caused such wild unrest. No matter how much science advances or how high we set our ideals, we eventually begin to suspect each other, to hate each other, and then to kill each other. The Snatchers are nothing more than a tool for bringing out this reaction. I am simply using the Snatchers to elicit the true nature of the human animal. I think this experiment has shown me the limits of human society. I sincerely doubt it will be able to reach any greater level of prosperity on its own. If human society ever hopes to reach greater heights, what is needed is an absolute leader. A firm ruler who isn't affected by these trivial episodes of mistrust. You're crazy if you think people would ever obey Snatchers. Of course they wouldn't. But if they don't know, they cannot object. There has been a time in every age that the people have longed for a god to lead them. As long as they give the people no reason to suspect them, then they can easily become their gods. Indeed, a new race of super beings. We are almost there. Once we perfect the artificial skin, Snatchers will transcend man to become this planet's true human beings. But you'll never get your perfect skin now. Professor Modner is dead. I no longer have any use for my father. 
I have a sample of the new skin he developed. Once I've analyzed it, I'll be able to make as much as I need. Or if need be, we could simply culture the keratinized cells, epithelial cells, and melanocytes in the quantities that we need. What are you talking about? How could you get a sample of perfected artificial skin? Why don't you take a look at this? We found this in the rubble of Queen's Hospital. It's random. Random! Oh, an acquaintance of yours? He's... he's a snatcher? That term isn't exactly accurate. This bioroid was constructed by my father without my knowledge. He modeled it after me in my youth. He built it right here in this facility. And not only that, he programmed it to destroy Snatchers. This bioroid caused me serious difficulties. It's designed and built far better than my Snatchers. The machine itself thought it was human. My father input memories for it all the way back to childhood. Those two were apparently mine. Haven't you yet realized? Random Hajil is Elijah Modner spelled backwards. How like my father, silly old man. He did virtually overnight what I could not do in 40 years of effort. Furthermore, he makes a bioroid so perfect, even the bioroid itself believes itself to be real. What's more, the cells of the skin he developed are self-replicating. Once in place, no further transplants or culturing is necessary. Is he dead? Its main and locomotive systems are completely shut down. It's just scrap now. But the artificial skin is being kept alive. This we need. With this, we can move to phase two of our plan of full-scale infiltration of the world's major nations. The summit's already over. You'll never succeed. What does the summit matter? Nothing holds us back now that we have this perfect skin. We can go anywhere we want, and there will be no way to tell us apart. I will have free control over the world. Nothing will be able to stop me. Politics and free thought will no longer have any meaning. My will alone will decide the course of human history. You egomaniac. Do you think you can snatch the entire population? There's a fully automated snatcher factory under the Kremlin. Even as we speak, scores of new snatchers are being born. But no matter how hard you try, you won't be able to snatch the people's heart and soul. What do you hope to gain from this anyway? Jamie, the human race is composed of fools. But I, I am different. I will be its savior. Indeed, not just of mankind, but of all life on the planet. I'm afraid that won't be possible. Metal! In ten minutes, this church will be struck by a phased particle beam. I am guiding the beam from the attack satellite using GPS and 15 navigational satellites. The beam cannot miss. Everything in a two to three kilometer radius from me will be destroyed. Stop this foolishness now. I will not have my research destroyed by some souped up pocket calculator. Metal, what happened at the summit? The delegates, worried about the snatcher menace, voted unanimously to allow the use of nuclear weapons on the city. The military is presently imposing a quarantine on Neo Kobe. What? Do they intend to kill everybody? The populace is in a state of panic. However, they have agreed to lift the quarantine if this church is struck by the phase particle beam. This is our last chance. I will handle things here. Gillian, Jamie, you two must flee. You insignificant mass of metal. You'll never... One move and I detonate. Gillian, run! Metal, this is crazy! We can't let a single snatcher get out of here. And this new artificial skin has to be destroyed as well. I will not allow some talking scrap pile to get away with this. If you were the aiming point for the beam, then I'll just have you thrown out of here. Grab the 
this little one and take him out of here. Here we go. You always were a real pain in the butt. What's that? What? How did... You're supposed to be deactivated. I don't go down that easy, old man. Stop this foolish... <sighs> Shut up! Let's try to make our final moments peaceful, shall we? And you Snatchers, you touch the little guy and the old man's head comes off! Random! I've always hated being used. Why don't you watch the final act with me? Gillian, you only have five minutes. The turbo cycle is just outside on standby. Use that to flee! Let me go. I'm Elijah Mudder. I'm your original. I don't care if I'm an original or a copy or what. You and I are gonna die right here. If we both die, there won't be a copy anymore now, will there? The stupid logic of a simpleton. Of a machine. Whatever it is, it's my will! Machines have no will. Machines cannot sacrifice themselves. We'll see about that. You have four minutes! You must go! And don't forget to take care of the factory under the Kremlin! Stop! Gillian, even if these memories in my head are fiction... Yeah, I know what you mean. Our memories of our time together are all too real, Random. Gillian, you become one hell of a junker. Gillian, it has been most recreational being your partner. Oh, metal! If you can, try to pick up the pieces for me, okay? Like we did for Little John. Little John? Oh! Okay, Metal. Hurry! You only have three minutes! Thanks! Thanks, you two! Jamie, come on! Man, this whole last act is just cutscenes. No! Don't let her go! No! You pathetic old fool! You don't even know how to love someone! You stupid machine! What is that idiotic grin supposed to mean? By snatching you, I'm finally gonna get my real self back! Random, there's less than one minute to go. Thanks to you, everything will be fine. You don't owe me any thanks. Sorry to get you involved in such a big job. You did great. You're a hell of a junker. Three, two, one, here it comes! Later, kid! No metal. Actually, uh, random as well. But mainly metal. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> that looks like Thunderbird 2. So you're really going, aren't you? It's our responsibility too. Besides, if I go to Moscow, I may get some of my memory back. And if that happens, I'll be able to love you even more than I do now. Wait for me. I want to be with you, but first I've got to destroy this terrible factory of theirs. Jamie, when I get back, let's try living together again. What do you say? We'll be waiting for you, too. Katrina! Mika! You're here, too? You better be happy, Buster, with all these beautiful women seeing you off. 
I'm happy you came. Uh, uh, let me introduce my, my wife. Jamie Seed. I suppose it's a little odd introducing myself a second time, though. What do you mean? Uh, you've never met them before, have you? What are you talking about, Gillian? We're good friends. Huh? Uh, since when? It's the first time I've met her in person, but I've spoken with her on the video phone a lot of times. What? Have you guys been talking about me behind my back? Wow, that was a long ass cutscene. But yeah, a lot, a lot of stuff happened there. A lot of stuff. Um, did I read that right? Snake is in Tekken. And it was leaked. What what is it with like why why are all of the fighting game announcements being leaked? Oh, random and metal though. Mm. Look, let's look at them all. Stare them out. I'm really sorry for all the worry I've caused you. By the time I return, I'll probably have my memory back. Don't worry, I promise to make you happy. This kid has had such a rough time, she lost almost everything practically overnight. I just couldn't stand to leave such a cute kid all by herself. She's done a really great job. I owe her a lot of thanks. Don't worry, Mika. This is one job I won't mess up. All right, let's talk to let's talk to Mika. Trying to learn more about you uh, about you was what got our relationship started. I was telling Mika about how lonely it was being home alone all the time, and she told me that Jamie was always worried about me. So I gave her a video phone call. Oh. With even Alice gone, I was really lonely. Katrina. Before I knew it, we really became close, didn't we? Our relationship has gone beyond just being friends. Beyond just friends? Ahem. That sounds pretty good to me. Gillian, your wife is right there, dude. Oh, well, don't be stupid, Gillian. You have a warped mind sometimes, you know. Okay, that's the end of that. I probably should have done them all in order. They're both so easy to talk to, it's like I've got two real sisters now. They're just like family to me now. I don't care if you get your memory back or not. Why? Because getting your memory back will mean that you'll remember those things about me that you hated. Things that I hated? What are you talking about? Dealing with each other's imperfections is part of what being married is all about, Jamie. Gillian. Don't worry. No memories will change how I feel about you. Thank you, Gillian. It's good to hear you say that. So have they finalized what they're going to do about Junker operations? I suppose this will end up being our last mission, huh? Well, originally they were planning on disbanding the team, but now they've decided to keep us in business. So that means... That's right. We've been designated as one of the government's special police divisions. That puts us above the regular cops. So the government has decided that crime by machines poses a bigger threat than crime by humans from here on out, huh? They've chosen the new chief, too. So when you get back, you'll get to meet the new head honcho. Well, it's comforting to know I've got a place I can come back to. Have a safe trip, Second Lieutenant Seed. I'm a Second Lieutenant as well, so let's try to work well together when you get back. What? I'm a Second Lieutenant? How come my rank is even lower than what I had in the Army, eh? Whatever you do, just come home safe, okay? When you get back from this job, you still have a dinner date to keep with me, you know. Don't worry. I won't forget my promises to either of you. Oops, oh, almost forgot. Of course, I'll want to spend some private moments with my wife, too, huh? Uh, uh, what's wrong, Jamie? Harry and I will be waiting for you to get home. 
that's Harry's hat. We can do it this time, Gillian. Not some fake couple like before, but with love and trust. I know, Jamie. Take care, Gillian. I'll see you, Jamie. Wait! Wait for me! Take me with you, please! Yay! You? He's a Mega Drive! Metal? Yes, sir! We didn't have a good frame to work with, so this is just a temporary body. Just call me Metal Gear, Sega CD for now. <laughs> so they found your memory chip in one piece, eh? Random protected it from the blast of the beam. Random, huh? Wait a second. I've heard that sneeze somewhere before. Really? Oh. I didn't hear anything. Anyway, I want to know if you'll take me with you. Please, Gillian, please take me with you. Hurry up and get on board, partner. Yes, sir, Gillian. I, I love the fact that he's uh, he's just a mega CD. He's a Mega Drive 2 slash Mega CD 2 combo. It's amazing. They must have just come out at that point. Metal's alive! Yeah! Uh, I think we've got the... I think that's it. Throughout history, suspicion has always bred conflict. The real conflict, though, resides in people's hearts. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> this conflict has just begun. Oh, this, this ending music's amazing, by the way. I really, really like it. That's it. What do you think, guys? You can tell it's a Kojima game, can't you? Especially the fact that it's got nuclear, like, there's nuclear war in it at some point. I, I honestly feel like that game holds up pretty bloody well, considering how old it was. Oh, it, it just said produced by Kojima, by the way. So, yeah, this wasn't the first game he directed, I believe. That over-dramatic -dra narrator. Hey, I love it. <laughs> I, I genuinely miss, like, bad voice acting. Well, bad voice acting in video games. What's up, Walk? Creator is Kojima, right? Yeah, the long-ass cutscenes also leads it to be, be a Kojima game, doesn't it? Listen to this fucking sexy-ass music. Uh, yeah, met, um, Solid Snake in Tekken? It, Evo's over, isn't it? Have they, I would have thought they'd, sh they'd have shown it by now. Or is it not over yet? Are they going to show it later? But yeah, d you know what? I really like that game. It's got a good good atmosphere to it. Like I said, I hopefully um, get around to giving Police Noughts a go at uh, some point. No, it didn't walk. Resi Run's uh, PS1 voice acting is amazing. The voice acting, voice acting is weird because it's kind of like corny and shit, but also like all right at the same time. Actually, you know what? Yeah, she did kind of. Uh, Mika did look kind of like Mei Ling, didn't she? In that, especially in that picture. Metal Gear. Elijah Madna. Yeah, I'd, I'd be interested to see if um, uh, Police Noughts has any... Because I, I don't know if it's a... I don't know how it relates to Snatcher. I don't know if it's in like the same universe or what. But it'd be interesting to see if there's any kind of crossover there between the two games.
I, I genuinely love this music. <laughs> it's so video game. Like this, this could not be music for anything else, I feel. Hey, Tron, are you, are you quoting um, uh, Metal Gear Awesome? How old was Harry? So he must have been like, what, 60s, was he? 50s, 60s? Oh, did she actually say that in Metal Gear Solid? I just remember it from uh, Metal Gear Awesome. There's the crew. Oh, does he? Again, I don't remember. It's been... Well, when did Metal Gear come out? That's when I played it last. <laughs> I don't know if we get a little cutscene at the end here or not. Oh, Konami. What happened to you? Oh yeah, Pachinko happened. Now, nah, that's a good ass uh, ending theme tune. Wait, what was that? Japanese undercover neurokinetic elimination ranger. What's going on here? <laughs> it's like trying to play bits of music. Is that it? I think that might be it. We go to the shell now. <laughs> I, yep, yeah, still holds up for me. Um, I mean, it's, as far as like visual novel style games go, I feel like that's definitely one of the better ones. Um, oh man, I'm kind of sad that that's over, you know. There you go. Yep, yeah, that's it. Oh dear. Yeah, I really like that. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as well. It's a bit, um, you know, it's, it's it's not the cleverest game ever, but there's some there's some there's some cool twists in there. I feel, don't you think? 